we Whoa. got Josh in the fucking house. <laughs> Woo. Hey, it's been, a, it's been a while coming. It has been has. So obviously, people that watch this, and it's I thought there wasn't a lot of people, but there is a lot of people that actually watch <laughs> it. Who are you? What do you do? How old are you? Give us a background. Uh, my name is Joshua Mora. Uh, I work for Athens. I'm a trash man as well, as the uh, past two Moras in his episodes. Um, I'm 27, and yeah. See, all right. Well, the way your cousin Gordo said, it's not a trash man. Uh, I'm a, what you Sanitation, Sanitation engineer. Sanitation engineer. There you Sanit- go. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, get. Make, it, make so, it sound special. You got to make, it, it's a profession, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a profession. So, 27, you work at Athens. Shit. How'd you end up at Athens? What, what'd you do before this or before that that got you into Athens? Uh, before Athens, I was working at in and out I got hired at 18, so I was there for about six years. Damn. And it got to a point where I was just over it. Crazy stories at in and out Shoot them. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Crazy stories at yeah, In-N-Out? Yeah, shoot them. Craziest like, story. Like what, though? So, th- before, we're going to continue this, obviously, yeah. but... Uh, I told him the reason why he's here is I know this guy has a lot of stories. About what? It's because you're a quiet guy. The I quiet am, guys am. always have the most stories. Nah, but I got a boring life. I don't do anything. What's the boring, most boring thing that ever happened at, uh, at in and out At work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is the most boring part of fucking work. All right, and the most exciting thing about that. Or craziest thing, craziest customer. Rundown, um, homie. How'd you land six years in that? How did I last? I don't know. I guess I'm patient, but you do deal with a lot of, a lot of shitty people. Where a lot like of Karens. Be, a lot of. The, no, I don't know about Karens. It's just a lot of people that are very picky about like their orders or but how it, stuff looks because they're so used to that in and out expectation. But that's just like you know? so simple, isn't it? I it think in and out is like one of the most simplest menus you can get. Yeah. But you got people find a way to make it difficult though, so that's what that's the kind of. Jesus. All right, crazy, crazy craziest story that happened during your shift. Uh, during my shift, I was actually on break though. Mm. But during during the shift, uh, Migos had actually pulled up. I guess after a concert, and they went to the drive through, so everyone obviously noticed them. I was on my break, so I didn't get a fucking say what's up. <laughs> but as soon as they came up, I guess one of the employees noticed them, said what's up, you know, handed the food, and yeah. uh, as their you know appreciation or like a little tip, because we're not allowed to receive tips anyways. But they stuffed a napkin full of weed and gave it to the, the employee <laughs> as like a tip for them, and just fucking took off. So that was like their way of saying what's up. Oh, shit. Yeah. Was there like a situation where you had to, let's say, handle a certain individual getting hit on at work? What what, what happened, bro? Getting hit on? Yeah. Nah. No one's seen you and be like, damn, I love you. I, I like nah, how you look. I've had, I've had guys hit on me. No! John has two. John has two. That shit's happened more than once, but it has happened to me and John where it's not it's not that fun. I mean, it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, but it was just like, I'm, I was never used to it. So, like, for them to be hitting on you while you're working, you're like, fuck. Like, oh, come back, you're changing the day. Like, all right, cool, see you later. I'll be like, well, have a good day now. <laughs> no, um, that's what exactly I'll, see you, I'll see you later. Well, oh, pretty sh- much. Oh, shit. So... Six years there, and now you're at Athens. How many? Three, four? Uh, January will be four years. Four years. What we always, I always ask this like, what keeps you because you go to work at what time? Four, five a.m.? Uh, I wake up usually like 4 30 the latest, and then to get to work to start at 5 30. Jesus, every day, every day, Monday to Saturday, Monday to Saturday, which he came from work after. Today, she got home, showered, and pulled up. Damn. So, how do you do that six days out of the week? What keeps you? What first? First question. What? What's the motivation to get up every day? And two, how do you continue and last now four years in there? Uh, I mean, as far as motivation to get every day, I mean, I need the money, so <laughs> I, you got to. It pays the bills. You don't want to be broke. Don't yeah, want to be broke. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's it's a job where. I mean, at least compared to In-N-Out, where it was so stressful, then I came to a job where no one's on my ass all day. I get to finish work when I finish. Like, as long as it takes me to do it, that's, they're cool with it, you know? As long as I'm not going overboard and taking breaks, like, longer than I'm supposed to. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I usually just look at it as, like, uh, I get paid to to show up to work and get to work out, basically. I mean, you're going and picking up people's trash cans by hand. So, I mean, it's not rocket science. Like, you know, you pull up, pick up trash, that's it. 
Yeah. Like, done deal. Once you're done, you're done. You go home. So what's the plan in the next, by the time you're you're 30, what, three years away from being 30? Yeah. Is there a plan by the time you get to that age or? As far as, like, working for that company? Anything. Just the future? Anything, well, I mean, I hope to be a homeowner by then. She. So that's, that's the goal right now. So what it. I, it's, so these conversations for me are a little more, I would say difficult because I already know, know you, yeah. right? We, fuck, you're technically now neighbors, right? Because we yeah, moved out here. pretty much. Party every now and then. But there, what is something that I don't know that people around you probably don't know about you? Is there a certain, uh, what do you, what do you call it? A habit that you have, a... Certain things you like to do or don't, like, do you open up to a lot of people? Is that one thing? Um, I feel like I'm pretty much open, like, when it comes to when people ask about it. Yeah. I mean, whatever the situation is or whatever they want to know. But as far as, like, me hiding stuff or, like, not showing who I am, like, I'm Come always on. me, you know? Like, I don't think there's anything that someone doesn't know about me when it comes down to that aspect of my life. Damn, so just open book, 24-7. Open book, yeah. So why'd you get an owl on your neck? Owl on my neck? You well, know, because... <laughs> Oh shit, we got a dream because uh mm-hmm. this one <laughs> because I already made fun of you and I make fun of you every time I see you, especially <laughs> with your dad. Yeah. But there's to get tatted on your neck, I mean it took you a while to get tatted because we yeah. talked about it. Yeah. Cause you said there's there wasn't a lot of artists that That even wanted to touch my neck, yeah. I guess mm-hmm. a lot of I would expect I mean you're a tattoo artist, you do all kinds of crazy ass tats. Like you're gonna be tatting people's faces, like but there was the first artist I went to that did like the original parts on my sleeve. Um the whole pandemic hit, and it was just taking him forever to hit me back up. He wasn't working. The shop he was at was closed down, so they didn't want to hit me up. I had hit up uh, another artist my aunt knows. Um, and the second she mentioned, like, yo, he's trying to get his throat tattooed, like, the entire neck, they're like, nah, like, I don't even touch that spot. I don't deal with it. Because I guess it's a real rough area, and a lot of people don't sit through it because of the pain. Yeah. So I was like, all right, kind of asked out. Um, luckily, uh, I hit up my homie Jared. Jared, obviously, we have a mutual friend named Adam who goes a cryptic tattoo in the Sousa, and he's just, like, covered, you know. I mean, as many tattoos as you think he's got, like, from throat all the way down covered. <laughs> so he hit me up, like, yo, just check out any artist, you know, if you like someone. I can hit him up for you, see if we can get a date set. So I ended up hitting him up. I saw this dude Dabs on uh, on IG. He lives out here in Riverside. No shit. So I was like, yeah, he's cool, you know. Like, I hit him up, see if he's down to do my neck, because I know people don't like to do it. And I sure as shit, he said he was down. I mean, I originally only wanted a little... A little owl, you know, just like part of it. And then I showed up and he convinced me to do the entire neck, so I did it. Oh, shit. Uh, what was your reaction to your mom or dad when you got home? Because uh, My mom hates it. Uh, she hates it this day. She says it looks uh, like a, it looked like a low life, she says. Because, I mean, that's what she's used to, you know, like growing up. But do you think that's like the, I would say, just a culture thing, a Hispanic thing? Because, I, I mean. I would say so because it's so frowned upon to have tattoos, like. Shit. To do it to your body? I'm 25, and I get home with a tattoo, and I get, like, she still gets mad. Yeah. But she tells me, I won't take care of Noah if you come home with another tattoo. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, so, you know, my parents aren't to that point. I think the throat, like, now that it's over with, like, this is going to be the worst tattoo I have. Like, the yeah. most, like, out there, I guess you could say, you know? Yeah. Um, I, the, the reactions were honestly, like, completely different from what I expected. My mom... Obviously has tattoos. She's always been cool with it. She's okay with it. Yeah. And then I got my throat done, so she seen me, and she was just, like, in disgust. Like, I don't like it. Like, why would you do that to your body? Like, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then my dad, which who I expected to, like, yo, get the fuck out the house type shit. Like, this is it. That was <laughs> like, you're already packing yeah, up the like, trailer and dude, shit. Like, you're, oh, done. you're done. I was expecting some shit. Like, even John's girl was home. Like, Ashley, she was like, dude, like, I didn't even want to be home when he pulled up. Like, I thought it was going to go really bad. Like, I thought it was going to be yelling. Like... So I was like, fuck, like, here we go, you know? So I pulled up. My mom, obviously, like, like, why would you do that? Yeah. It looks disgusting. Like, I don't like the way it looks. I was like, yo, like, it's my body. I'm going to do it. Like, it's, I guess you could say it's a little more uh, accepted nowadays. Not a lot of people accept it, but a lot yeah. of more people have tattoos than you expect, you know? A lot. And then my dad's only reaction was, uh, entre mas grandes, mas locos y pendejos. So to me, that was, like, best case scenario. I was like, yo, like, golden, he just laughed. Like, we're good. Like, I'm good. This is, we're golden. This is it. You're like the the ugly duckling, then, of the family. The black sheep of the, the family. The black of the family. The only with tattoos, piercings, the only one with a fuck up. No. Nah. <laughs> I guess you could say I mean, that wasn't a fuck up. We can't say a fuck up because none of us go to college. Yeah. 
I mean, I went for a semester, think, but that was it. Uh, I think I beat all of you because I went two years and I still didn't graduate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you lasted a lot longer. I lasted a longer, but a it was longer. just, you know, it, I think we, us as, as Hispanics and the way we grew up, we do a lot of things for our parents. Yeah. That's why I stuck around yeah. school because one, it was just to see my mom happy to go to school. My dad literally had told me, well, maybe you should stop because you need to come work. I'm like, I was like, nah, I got to focus in school, which, I mean, I went to school five days out of the week. Three days, or at least two full days out of there, I wouldn't be at school. Mm -hmm. I would still pass the class because it was like, bro, this is... Certain topics, I was like, this is the easiest shit to do. Study it, pass the test, and you're good. And you're good. I mean, yeah. obviously, you do the research on the teachers, but uh, as far as, like, Hispanics, like, our parents, I think the way we grow up is the way... They taught us like you gotta be responsible, you gotta you gotta earn your own bread. Yeah, you have to clean up that up after yourself, and you gotta do something with your life. Yeah, you know. I mean, I know they'll keep us in their house for as long as they can. Yeah, they'll support us as long as they can. But I mean, I when we talked to like when we had John and even John off the camera, like he just says like your dad has been that example of what it is to do something for your family, which work. Yeah, I mean, he's always said, like, he's told us, like, you want nice things in life, you got to go out and get it. Like, no one's going to hand it to you. Facts. So, but I mean, a, a lot of things where, like, in school, you're just so used to, like, people telling you, like, oh, you want you want these kind of things, you want to be successful, you got to go to college. Yeah. So, that's like, you know, it's already embedded in your brain. Like, you got to go yeah. to school, you got to go to college, or else you're not going to You got to get an education, like, you, you got to find yeah, a great yeah, job, exactly. da, da, da. Or else it's not going to happen. But it's crazy, like, I don't mean, I want to say the, the, the statistics is still correct, but... I want to say a trash man still makes more or about the same as as a as a teacher, almost regular like high school, yeah. elementary. I wouldn't be too sure, but I mean, it's, it's more than I expected for a trash man. Yeah, like, no I would shit, never fuck yeah. Known, like especially when I was at in and outs, I thought like, oh, I'm gonna be a store man, like I'm gonna make six figures, like you know, I'm golden. I was making like thirty eight thousand a year, which I thought was a lot. Like, fuck full yeah, full time making fifteen dollars an hour, like dude, <laughs> like I made it, you know, like without a college education. And it was just one of those things where it's like, at in and out you had to wait so long to get to that point, you know? Like, it could have taken me 10 years. It could have taken me two. It just depended on who was on my side, what managers I had, like, or if, you know, like, I just happened to get lucky and move up quick. But it's really hard out here, especially, you know, because like California is so I heard, strict. I heard from your brother that uh, the manager you guys had was... He was a dick. Was <laughs> yeah, he was, I mean, he was... From what I hear, I guess he's cool now. He's like a good people's person. But at that point, like, he had just got promoted. So I don't know. Like, I can't tell you, like, exactly, exactly what it was, his, his mindset. Because I obviously don't know his situation. But he was only, like, to me, it seemed like he was only worried about his pockets. Like, mm. his money, as long as he was good, that was it. Uh, Everyone else can fucking do what they needed to do, you know? It was, like, to each their own, basically. Basically, like, you're on your own. like, And it was just to the point where he's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to help you move up. I'm going to help you move up. Never happened. A year went by, nothing happened. And that's when Bammy brought up Athens and then And Bam, here started. you are. She yeah. Damn. So again, we didn't even answer it, but why why the owl on your Why neck? the owl? So um the owl to me, I, I did a lot like well most of most of my tattoos have meaning, not all of them. But a lot of my sleeves, I've been doing pieces of family members that passed away. Mm. So like the Virgin Mary, obviously I have it because I like Mexican tattoos, I like Day of the Dead. I did the Sacred Heart because that's part of the Virgin Mary statue. So I got it in pieces instead of one one shot. Um, so I have it bleeding out. Um, to me, it resembled when my cousin Gabby passed away. Mm. She passed away on Christmas at a young age from a heart attack. Well, not a heart attack, but she had a hole in her heart that led to a brain aneurysm. Jesus. And she died Damn. on Christmas Day. So that's like, to me, it resembles like part of Gabby. Yeah. For me, at least, you know? Um, so then I have the roses, but then I have one in red. For my aunt and bottle who died of lung cancer, like literally, that within that same year my cousin died sure. um, from lung cancer two weeks after she was diagnosed. And my mom would always talk about my aunt and bottle like she was so beautiful when she was younger, like you know a lot of she could have been a model type. You know how like they hype they hype yeah. her up. And a lot of her pictures she's always like in red lipstick. So I did a red rose because roses are beautiful to me, you know. Like so a red one that's what it resembled. Uh, then I have Jesus. And then I have a fallen angel, which I mean just just to go continue with the sleeve. And then I did the owl because on my chest, I'm going to do a memorial tattoo for my uncle who mm. committed suicide when we were in high school. Within a year after that, so within a year and a half, we lost three family members. 
And my uncle, I looked up to a lot because obviously in high school, you know, you know who I was, that type of yeah. person where I wanted to be affiliated. He was a piece of shit. He was a dick. <laughs> had him from one, don't remember had him from one class, class and he was sitting on the I bar don't. stool, like looking down at all yeah, of us. I don't remember having you at all. Though. Unapproachable. Like, I swear to God, unapproachable. I was unapproachable because of John. That was John's fault. John spread rumors. You think? I think. Well, I mean, it doesn't help around the people I would hang out with. That, ah, that obviously there it didn't is. help. But that's there not who I was, though, you know? Like, you see this guy? It to be people I knew since I was a it, kid. It was the most, I would. I mean, now I look at it, like the most stupidest class. It was art class. Yeah. And then he's up there on the bar, so just like quiet and doing his job. Looks <laughs> at you and just like nods, looks back. Yeah, and it. It's like. Fuck, well, dude, can't even say hi. Yeah, <laughs> good morning. Much of, not much of a Can't even a good morning, yeah, bro. Not, like, I'm not much of a talker. But I think, like, now, day and age, like, when you see somebody, it's more of a happier, like, hey, good morning. And if they don't say it, then they're stuck up. They're, I'm a yeah, guy. Whatever assume, the fucking case assume, may be. Yeah. But in high school, it was just, like, it, it really depended on who you're with. And who you were hanging like, out I with. Like, I was, I mean, yeah. I was with all the paisas and cross country yeah, yeah. and soccer, like, Eh, so paisa, come on down. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that. And then, Part of that click. But it, when we had a, uh, uh, when we had, I say, I was like, bro, when you see 10 motherfuckers walking on one, on a small little curve, yeah. walking down, I was like, oh shit, they're coming through. <laughs> here they are, here they are. Yeah, because it was just all, like, even your brother, when he, when you're not talking to him, he's just like, serious. It's like, yeah. But from, it's crazy because when you get to know people, and I think now we're more of a people's person, you would say, like, you really get to know the stories, who they are, that they're really happy, they're, they love to fuck around, and shit, that's pretty much who Josh is. Yeah, yeah, if, I'm that type of person. Yeah, but talk about your fucking journey, bro, because you did not look like this a year ago. No, I didn't, but cup- to answer your question before we have to go back, uh, so the owl represents, I looked up, um... According to, like, you know, on the internet, it's what I read up. So I don't know if it's completely true, but I'm going to go with that story. Yeah. I guess before, like, the Aztecs and Mayans, Mexican tribe believed that owls helped lead people into the heavens and mm. were lost. So I have the owl on top. Then I'm going to do a, a dove of my uncle with his tattoos incorporated. So, like, you know, a little piece to him. Um, since he committed suicide, they say you're not allowed into heaven because you took your life before God intended to. From what I've heard, like, again, don't quote me on it. I'm not too sure about it. <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so that to me was like, all right, so like, I was going to be on top of my uncle helping him get into heaven because of a situation, what he did to his life, you know. So, that's yeah. why I got the owl. Not knowing that it was going to, you know, probably mean something to other people, but that, that was is, my intention. No, that is, that is fucking crazy because, yeah. I mean, I got tatted at a party at 17 <laughs> yeah it was literally a fire party like in a fucking garage while everybody's drinking and partying yeah, and i'm yeah. there on the table getting my last name tatted. <laughs> like i'm just thinking like hell yeah i'm, I'm fucking verified in high school t- now I'm tatted, bro. Like, yeah I'm because it. after I made it. after that we didn't graduate yet and after that i was like dude I seen you getting tatted out of the table, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. But my mom didn't find out until I was 18. Like, I, w- I got that one, then I got my my chest done, and then I got my arm done. And as soon as I turned 18, it was my ribs were done too. As soon as I turned 18, it's like some my mom knew. Check them. I'm so like, up. Like, what? And then my dad, I swear to God, he came home from work. <laughs> it was like 7, <laughs> 8, p- like 7, 8 p.m. Yeah. I'm just like drinking my milk and cookies, chilling. He was like, lift up your shirt. I was like, oh. I was like, for what? Lift up your shirt. And I was like, nah, what, what do you mean? That's weird. Why? <laughs> and then my, my mom just got tired, lifted it up, and they just seen the whole fucking, this side is completely done for my great-grandparents. And I was just like, and she was like, uh, I see te quería ver como pizarrón. I was like, fuck. Yeah. My dad, my mom, my dad, and none of my uncles are tatted. So besides one of my uncles, but my mom was like, oh, you want to forget your last name? You're going to forget my name. Two weeks happened, bro. No lunch, no dinner, no <laughs> no talking to own, me. Swear. Yeah. yeah, nothing. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, I'm already pretty tatted. Either I tell her now and we'll get over it or I'm going to hold it to myself. Yeah. And I went in and I was like, hey, well, I got to talk to you. What? I was like, well, I got to tell you something. I just don't want you to be mad, which Mm -hmm. obviously they're going to be mad already. 
And she, she was like, what did you do? And I was like, well, look, I have both of my ribs done. I have my chest done and I have my shoulder done. Hmm. All right. To this day, I think I got this little piece done. Oh, and God, yeah. So she went with me, right? Because we got our uh, faith in the middle <laughs> in the middle finger, right? So if you want to see faith, I'm going to flip you off really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we got the infinity sign. And then I got uh, half of, of the rosary because we're still not done from my boy Tony. Um, and we're going up north with my mom. And we're leaving at night. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get home. We're a long sleep and we're leaving. Yeah. My little sister burned me out. Before we, I walked into the house, mom, yeah, you got a tattoo. And she <laughs> came. And she, that was, and Brittany was there with me. So yeah. she was just like, uh, the quietest ride for three hours. Oh, that's awkward as fuck. No, no. I that was a sweet stuff Yeah. There was no talking. So you didn't have to deal with it? <laughs> And the next day, we're with all my family, and I had, yeah. like, regular shirt and whatever, and everybody's just looking at me like, oh, da da da, da. My mom's just like, hmm, hmm. I got the lion done, and she's just like, don't, I'm not going to babysit Noah. And I was like, yeah, you're yeah, lying. Yeah, nah, come on, you got nah, Yeah, so I, no I literally just told her, like, two days ago, I was like, hey, like, I'm going to put your face on my side, so now you'll get to see yourself in my arm. <laughs> You gotta look at yourself every day, now. bro. It, it, but it's like parents, our moms, our dads, like the way they're raised before it compared to us is like completely different. But completely uh, different. But what what would you say, or what would you, or who would you say that inspired or you admired growing up that you wanted to semi be like or showed you the way to be who you are? Um. Is there Man, like a that's group? Hard. Yeah. I mean, I take I try to take a little bit out of everything in my life, but for the most part, it's been like my parents the whole time. Like mm. just seeing how they were growing up, like the shit they sacrificed to raise us, like five kids. I'm I'm pretty sure it wasn't easy, especially like at 18. Like there was no TV, dog. Yeah, I, so apparently, huh? So I mean, like at 18, <laughs> raising like me, and then having John right after. Like we're all so close in age, you know. So that's that's been a part. But like you know, seeing my dad too, like being able to go work. Support the family when my mom stayed at home type shit. Like, it's, it's been one of those things where I look at, like, life, like, fuck, like, I want to be that person, like, when I grow up, you know? I want to yeah. be that person that's supportive. I can do whatever I can to help out to that point. But, I mean, for the most part, it's just been, like, I take I take like, a little bit of everything. Like, as I'm going through life, like, you learn as you go kind, kind of thing, mm. you know? Has there been one? <laughs> he's famous, dog. You know, he's tired. Give him your autograph after. Hell yeah. <laughs> He doesn't know it, but he's going to come <laughs> on, dog. He's going to come. We're going to get him to it. Um, but is, has there, what do you think has played a big role in, in your life that you, I don't know. Like, I look at it, like, obviously my dad, my mom, my uncles. But I think there's still, I have to listen and watch certain, like, podcasts or people. And they have to, and they remind me. So I know those names. They remind me of certain topics and certain lessons that I've already learned as growing up and now as, as an adult and 25, being a, my, a parent, like these words that other people already say it, that I already know, it just like reassures me. Yeah. So it's like, is there certain people you follow? Is there certain things that you follow that you try to abide by? For the most part, no. Nah. I mean, I've always lived my life like... I'm big on, like, uh, I guess you could say karma. Mm. So I've always been the type of person, like, you give and you receive. So I'm like, I try to do good Yeah. by whoever I can. Have you felt that before, though? Receive that. Have you felt that karma before at a point? For the most part, yeah. I mean, I could say, like, growing up, I didn't have, you know, a life like others. There's always someone that has it worse than I do, you know? So I, that's how I look at it. Like, my parents yeah. did whatever they could to make sure I had a life that they never had. So I, I, I'm truly grateful for that. So yeah. I try to give back whenever I can or... Like for the most part, I don't make a whole lot of money. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not balling out like that type of shit. But some things like, I told my mom she's probably like, the only person who knows. But every year, like on holidays, if I go out to eat or if I just see somebody, I'll give like a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to someone random that I think might need it. You know, like shit like that. I guess you can say like ins not inspires people, but like fuck, like this person just gave me a hundred bucks or like two hundred bucks. Like maybe they need it. Like maybe they're in school stressing out about some shit or they just got 
you know, personal problems that they have. Yeah. And maybe that money could help out or like, you know, do good, doing a good deed for somebody. It doesn't always have to be money. So that, to me, that's what's like, I try to live by like, I'm hoping that me being the person I am will one day give me the life that I want to live. Yeah. Shit. So you are a good guy. Be, try, behind the, behind be. the tattoos, you are a good guy. I try guy. to be, yeah. Because that perception of you have tattoos, you're that, how you're with your like gang banger, You're a gang you're banger, you're a low life, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Like people hide the kids and I go shopping and shit. Like, it's bad. <laughs> you're walking and like Mika go on this side. It's happened. <laughs> no. It's happened. I swear to God. After like the second week after my neck was done, I walked into like do my meal preps and this lady like put her purse on the other side and then grabbed her daughter. Like, <laughs> as I was walking by the aisle, like, dude, come on. That's, like, too much. Oh, if they really knew who Josh was, huh? Yeah. If they yeah. really knew who Josh was. If they only knew. So, what, like, what, what would you say is, uh, besides being a homeowner, what else, what plan are you looking for? Because we just talked about it, a podcast. Podcast? Doing a podcast with, uh. With all the primos, all the primos, all the moras, no, that'll be dope. all the everyone together, all, everybody. Yeah. It'll be just like a normal, normal Saturday for us. Everyone drinking, having a good time. You guys really, that needs to be like recorded. Oh yeah, a week, especially when a, you get when you get this guy drinking, we got some good ass conversations for sure. Oh, I, I think I have. Yeah, I have a video of this guy that's behind the camera. Dancing to a song that they're, I think Stephanie was playing, so he's just like, ah. Oh, I didn't see that one. I oh, that yeah, because he was doing that. it, <laughs> Stephanie was doing it, Isaac was doing it by the entrance. But it, it's just like the how do you say it? Like, just how special that even as that drunk moment, as we may yeah. get, like, you can't replay, you can't remake them, yeah, you can't even duplicate them. It's just a new moment, mm -hmm. right? So being that you ha you're close to all your cousins and you have a lot of cousins uh, around the same age group, did that play a big effect? Has that played a big effect in your in your day in life? I, I can say it does because I mean like we're all very supportive of each other. Like we try to make sure everyone's straight. We try to help each other succeed. Like succeed in life. Like we don't ever want to see someone we know like so close like not be where they want to be. You know, like or get down on themselves because they're not at yeah. what they feel like they should be at. You know. Everyone's everyone's journey is gonna be different. Everyone's gonna get at a certain point in life at a different time. Like, but just because someone else has already got what you don't got doesn't mean that you're not gonna get to that point. I think that's something like we all we all tend to tell each other like, yo, like, shit's happening right now doesn't mean it's always gonna be like this. Like, eventually it's gonna get better. Damn. Yeah. Let's pause it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta cry. I'll be right back. Oh no. So Josh still doesn't want to tell us any stories that really happened, but uh, eh, maybe he'll break out of the shell once he's a little drunk later on. Maybe. maybe. So we gotta we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a part like ten after this one with this dude. <laughs> but uh, I we always ask this because I think it's very important, be, you know, and between and in us men, right now, like, has there been like days that's been tough with with you, like that you've had when you get up throughout the day, week, that you just like, fuck, I need a reset? Um, reset? I wouldn't say that. I mean, there's there's days where I'm tired as fuck. Like, dude, like, I got to go to work today. Like, some bullshit. Yeah. Like, I'm just tired. I'm just drained from the week. Like, whatever it is, you know, maybe the heat. Or just st not stress from work, but, like, how heavy it is at work. It, it takes a toll. Yeah. That, and then, like, there's days when I go to the gym, it's just, like, everything accumulates sometimes. It's like, fuck, I need a rest day. Like, I can't do this shit. Damn. So, we ended it on your journey. So, you've been training and on this weight loss journey for how long? Nine months now. Why'd you do it? Uh, or why'd you keep on for so long now? For so long? I guess it's been like a part of me that's, I've always, like, I mean, you know, too, like, when we would go to the gym before, I would show, like, maybe twice a week, if that. When we went. He when, went twice. He went twice. I went twice, exactly. You twice, know? So I've never seen him again always, in my life. It's always been that hard was to it. commit. He's and still like, paying for that membership to this day. <laughs> no, nah, I canceled that shit a long time ago. We're good. We're good. Not anymore. Not anymore. But yeah, it was like, it was very rare. And I mean, at that time, I was a helper at fucking Athens. So I mean, I had lost weight. Yeah. And I just got really complacent of where I was. Like, ah, I'm good. Like, I don't need a gym. Yeah. And then, obviously, I gained all that weight back, became a driver, I gained more weight, and I just got to the point where, I was like, my heaviest I've ever been was, like, a 258, which mm. is just recently. 
What and the fuck I was, you trying to say, fool? I'm not, I'm not that way right now. But you're buff, fool. You got, you got that dad bod going. I'm a dad, hey. you, you got that. That's, hey, that's the thing you, that's in you, right if now. If you rank them right now, dad bods are here and it's, fit bods are there. It is, though. No, low We're key. We're at the top. But I don't have a kid, so I can't pull that one off. Like <laughs> That you know of. That you know of. I hope not. Jesus. We're good. Uh, we're good. We're good. He's we're a good. virgin we're good. We're to marriage. Ladies, yes, hit him up. Exactly. We're gonna. We're gonna, I'm we're gonna myself. He's a virgin. That's why you know. That's why the two tattoos happen because he's representing I'm to marriage. I'm committed. committed. That's what it is. <laughs> so your trainer, you said it. It's your cousin. My cousin, yeah. One of your cousins, cousin Victor. And he just fucking boom puts you on check. I mean, pretty much. I had at that point. Um, when I was like 258, I just felt like all my clothes fit me. I was just like really uncomfortable with myself, like Same the way on. my clothes fit. I didn't feel like I had no energy to do anything. I would just get home, chill, Damn. watch TV, and eat like a fat ass. So I would do, you know? How do you do it with, the? Uh, I mean, all the primos, your family, it's, it's when they go over and they're hard. eating, it's, pounding? It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard as hell like to say no to certain shit, especially like when you're on a strict diet. Um but it's just one of those things where, like, I've gotten this far already. Like, why give it up now? Like, I'm just so dedicated to it. Like, so I want to get that point where I haven't before. Because I would always, that's been always been my problem. Like, I would get into it, fall off. And then yeah. get into it, fall off. Like, I want to make this a lifestyle now. Like, I want to continue where Seven I'm at. Done. I've already made, like, progress. More progress than I've ever made before. Like, I, I'm probably, like, in the best shape I've ever been since high school. Which I mean, I graduated in 2011, you know, so fucking old. Hey, yeah, exactly. Oh, got you. Like, <laughs> I can't do this, you know. But it's it was one of those things where I was just so like so tired of being where I was at. Like I was like, dude, I need to make a change. But you're you're disciplined. Yeah, I'm a lot more disciplined now. A lot more. Like before, it was always like one of those things where, like we were talking about before, like yo, on a cheat day, like ah, yeah. fuck it, you know, I'm ready. I already, oh, already ate yeah. something that, bad. Might as well just eat another one. You're like, I mean, might have another meal. Me, I'm about to go hit the, the bike right now. <laughs> cause, you know, but that's so that that's why like I try to explain to a lot of people that uh, a journey isn't just two, three months. You know, it's in a month not. you're gonna make a big difference. Yeah. Two months maybe you'll make more, but once you hit three and four, and then that in between is just like it stops, right? Because mm-hmm. you hit that that border, like kind of plateau. Yeah, you hit that plateau, you hit that wall, and it's just about figuring out what more or what different you can do. you do now. Yeah. And that's why I mean, and we've talked about it before. Like there's certain people at that facility that I've seen that be, from not even being any sort of athlete to barely even having the the. The certifications to teaching, right? Yeah. I lost 10 pounds in this week. I'm a trainer. I'm going to teach you how to lose yeah, 10 pounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, no, you can't. There's, mm-hmm. There has to be a lot of trial and tribulation. But, you know, I see you and and the work that you've been putting in and through your, through your, basically you're your cousin's, like, you're one of his, right? You're yeah, his yeah, client yeah. and you're continuing almost on a full year. And it's like, bro, there's something you're doing that he's doing that's coming on to you that's just... It's working. It's working. It's, yeah, it's one of those things, like you said, like, it's just dedication. Like, of course, I mean, within those two, three months, you're going to make differences. Like you said, like, you're going to hit a certain point where you just Damn, stop, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I, I started off slow, so I got 258. I just started, like, portioning my food out. I would still eat what I wanted, but Some I ate more. less, you know? Yeah. Instead of fucking going overboard with all my meals. So that helped out. And then uh, I eventually started losing weight, losing weight. And this is my cousin. He was like, they were working out at his house. I was, the plan was for me to start working out with him at his pad. Mm. Um, and at that time, I was like maybe two four, like 245, right? So he ended up getting this job at Self Made. He's like, yo, like, I know we should work on my pad if you want. Just come through. You can train here. You know, like, if you're really down, let's do it. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Like, see where I'm at. See what happens. And then within five months, I went from, I think it was like 240, maybe 242. To 195, and I was just like, yeah, I was like strict, like no more sugar, like low on my carbs. Jeez. I had done keto, but then I switched over to like regular meal plans, like, and it was just one of those things where it was like day in day out, like, yo, I'm already getting results. Like, there's no point of fucking up now and yeah. putting in all this work just to lose it, you know. Stay, stay tuned for Joshua's meal plan and training camp because he's, he's about to come out with the I, with I, the. I've been using all their meal plan. I'm using my cousin's meal plan. So hey, I'm doing it. It works. That's shit that happens. So, what is what would you say? And I want you to really think about it before you answer this. 
what is one goal, dream, vision that you may have? That you have that you want to accomplish in the next couple of years, this year, whatever it is. Like as far as fitness wise? Anything. 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 Life. Anything. Life. No homie. That. Something about yeah. Josh. Yeah. Oh, See, we just said we were just saying, give us something. Give us something. Juicy. Yeah, I don't we, know. Like yours. I'm very like, um, I guess you could say like I have short term, maybe long term plans, I guess you could say. Like short term, I've always like right now, like my fitness journey, like I'm trying to get into the best shape I can. Like, All right. I'm trying to reach that goal of like a body I've never had before, just to show myself that I could do it. Like anybody could do it, you know, Simone. type of shit. Um, so I've been like, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, like I've been this dedicated. Why am I gonna lose out now? Like, continue yeah. on, see where you can get. There's no yeah. certain goal that I want to hit, but I, I just want to show myself that I could do, can it, do you it. Do know? it, yeah. It's not impossible. Um, exactly. And then short term, I guess you could say like another part was being a homeowner. I want to be a homeowner one day. Like, it's just something I've always, as a kid growing up, like. My parents had it hard, like, just recently became homeowners, and they're already, like, mid-40s, you know? And they've always showed us, like, growing up, like, yo, you want this, you want that. Like, my dad said, you want something nice, you got to work for Go it. Get it. And they've always, like, as soon as I was 18, like, yo, like, credit cards, you got to do this. Like, make sure you don't get into debt. Like, stay on top of this. Obviously, I did fuck up along the way, but they never bailed me out to show me that I have to, like, do this do on yourself. my own. Like, yeah. no one's going to help me out, like, through this process. Yeah. And... So that's that's something that's been for me, like, yo, like I want to be, like you, like, I want to be a homeowner at 20s, you know, maybe before 30, like, to show, like, at least for myself, like, yo, like, I did it, I did this on my own, like, this yeah. is something my parents have, like, just fucking been on me, and, like, now it makes sense as to why, that way later on in life, I can retire, like, yo, I already got a house that's paid off, my kids don't got to worry about nothing, like, Simone. I'm straight, you know, like, I mm. get this over with, rather than worrying about, like, what kind of shoes I'm gonna go buy next week, or what kind of clothes I'm gonna be sporting? Yeah. Like, because you're you're really, I would say you're not that big on the whole um, possession, right? Like you you've had cars that you yeah. had and sold, you've got on trips on your own. Yeah, you went to what was it, Hawaii, Hawaii last week? Myself, last yeah. year on by himself. Like two years ago, yeah. <sighs> Look at this guy. Look at this do. guy and cheating, cheating yourself. Yeah, exactly. You gotta. Like, my parents said, you know, you work hard. You might as well enjoy your life. Like, my mom's always been big on that as to, like, go out, do these things while you don't have kids. Like, enjoy your time. Like, they never got to experience yeah. that, you know? So, like, sh she's been big on, like, me going out, doing my own thing, like, going out on trips. And it's it's hard, you know? Like, people people's situations are always different. Fuck so, I said, yeah. fuck it. Like, if I'm going to go out, like, I'm going to go do something on my own. That's when I did Hawaii. Yeah. I said, fuck it. I'm going to go with myself, enjoy myself. And it was a good ass time, like even by myself, like it was dope. I met a bunch of people out there, like it was cool as hell. Like I enjoyed myself to the max, and I try to do something new every year, like for my birthday. Like yeah, every year I want to go out, experience something different. To say yeah. like one day, like when I do have kids, I don't have to worry like fuck, I didn't get experience this. Like I didn't. Yeah. Go out. Not saying that the kids are gonna hold me back. No, but that's, right now that I have the opportunity to, I'm gonna take advantage. No, you know? like exactly what you, what you just said, and that's why I was talking to Brittany, and we t we talked about it the other day where. When when you have kids, you can't tell them to go go out for your dreams and live your life when you yourself didn't do it. Yeah. Even when having them, like that's our during we're doing the podcast. We bought a house. We did all this, but and I'm going to the gym. I'm still trying to do me. Why? Because at the end, like me is me, and in order for me to be a, I would say a good dad to him, is like. I can't be a hypocrite to you. Yeah. I can't tell you, go do this. And you do well, the son, let me tell you about the time I thought I was going to say, nah, let me tell you about the time I did do it. Yeah. And this is what I did. And uh, this is what I experienced. And hopefully you experienced something the same or differently. Yeah. Yeah. But you have your options. And how you said at one point, you know, this house would be for him. The next house will be for whatever the, I don't give a shit. Whatever it is. Yeah. He just has to know how you just said my, my kid, like, will understand what we went through to get to the position, mm -hmm. which the position that you you are in right now and and your brothers, like, it's not easy because you guys get up super fucking early just to go work. Yeah. Make ends make ends meet, but still at one point treat yourself. You yeah. know, you don't get your check and well, I got a thousand dollars. I'm gonna spend nine hundred dollars out of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And have only a hundred bucks for the week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be like that sometimes. You can uh, spurge a little bit too much, but yeah, for the most but part. But at one point, you gotta to be treat smart yourself. with it. Exactly. Yeah. So, what? I, I love ending it this way. Like, what? Uh, in a one to ten, mental, uh, 
money, phys- What are you? Where are we at? I'm gonna say ten. <sighs> I'm just I'm happy with life right now. Like shit just worked out. Like perfect. I mean, like I said, there's always someone worse. There's always someone that has it worse than what you got it. You know, like I'm at a point where I have a job. I have a car. I had two cars at one point. I sold one because I didn't need the second one. Like, you know, because I'm trying to get a house. I'm trying to accomplish those things in my life. Like, there was no point of me having it. So, I mean, I have a car that gets me to work every day. Yeah. Right? I got my cousins, my family. Like, yo, we're so close as fuck. Like, we still have a good-ass time. Like, you yeah. know, I may not have, like, the most flashiest things in my life. Or I'm not really big on social media. Like, I rarely post anything on my social yeah. media. Like, which really doesn't matter to me, you know? I have um, notifications. They just says, Josh, First story in yeah, three months. So I'm long. like, oh exactly. shit. And it's just He's been on. Like my weight loss for no process, you know? <laughs> like going from fucking 250 to 195. Yeah. Um, so I like for me it's been a 10. Like I can't complain about life and I like I'm I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not saying I'm complacent, Fuck but me. I'm happy where I'm at. It's going good for me. Like I'm just gonna continue going on. Like hopefully, like you said, like my what I plan on the future, like short term goal, they said, you know. Getting my house, getting the body I wanted, long term goals, starting a family one day, you know, like mm. <clears throat> doing my own thing. But are we taking resumes right now? All the time. We're always <laughs> taking resumes. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. Well, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna send we're gonna put on the links, uh you're gonna you're gonna put in your name, your resume, who you are, what you bring. Credit score, all that shit. Credit score. No, I'm saying. <laughs> Got to. What in in the words of Google, how much you make a year? How much you make a year? Like, hey, I, I swear and I make fun of Ashley. But that Josh, I mean, John doesn't remember it, but Google was like, how much do you make? <laughs> I Tell never me. heard that story. That's crazy. Hey, yeah, we're at, <laughs> we're at the Cove. We're at the Cove, and it's uh, Ashley, John, and me. And literally, Google's like getting, not getting mad, but he's just like. He's pressing it. Do you have ads, blah, 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 whatever. How much do you make a year? Because my guy here makes good. How much do you make? <laughs> She's just fuck? like. Uh, <laughs> good, I guess you know. But so we're gonna put that on there. So don't be, don't hesitate, and don't lie about it because maybe social security number. You know, you <laughs> do a background check. Not just like with you. <laughs> put your family tree. Yeah, I want to know. I gotta know all that shit. Oh Jesus! Now nah, we're good. We're what are you gonna take a shot of? We're gonna take a shot. I want to take a shot. Whatever you got. Whatever you got. Tequila. Tequila. We got oh, Jack bottle. Look at this guy. Well, I'm a. I. I'm not. A, Jack Daniels? No. That's why I don't like... Ha- the only reason why I don't like having you and your brother is because... The whiskey or... <sighs> Jesus. No, my guy. That's like uh, gasoline going down your throat. Oh, so tequila isn't? Nah, this is uh, like uh, Advil. You know, it's like Vaporu going down. It's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be good for your, for your house. Don't worry about it. But, uh... Shit, bro. Gracias. Thank you. It's, it's been a, it's been a it's been a while coming, it right? We've been. always talking about I've, it for a I've while. always told you about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and we finally made it made it happen. It and happen, uh, I yeah. I can't wait to for people to listen about how really how just simple you are and how happy you are yeah. with life. Not a whole lot to it. But Not a whole lot to it, yeah. but that's the thing. That's all, that's all that matters. You can't you can't ask for the whole world and and you can't handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You handle what you can. You're happy with what you have, and you're still shooting out for more. Always, never Shoo, stop. My dude, here it is. There we go. Stay tuned. <laughs>